I want you to know that the title of the sermon is Houston, We've Got a Problem. In keeping with our vacation Bible school theme, I thought it was fitting to share a story about three astronauts who were on a spaceship headed for the moon. Uh, maybe that's why we couldn't hear Pastor John. He was, he was too far out in space, but that's, that's okay. He will be here the first week of July. Uh, let us pray together. Lord, hide me so securely behind the cross that only your light shines in the words I am about to speak. Amen. On April 11th, Apollo 13 lifted off from Cape Canaveral, renamed uh, the Kennedy Space Center, and they headed toward the moon. How many of you out there remember this? Any of us remember this? Okay. Um, this was the, to be the second time our astronauts were to uh, land, actually, uh, and walk on the moon. It was flying as planned into the vastness of this space until April 14th, when an oxygen tank exploded, causing severe damage to the spacecraft. And for the first time, the now famous words were uttered, Houston, we've got a problem. Those weren't actually the actual words. Hollywood shortened it to that, but Commander Lovell actually said, uh, mission flight, we've got a problem up here. The three-man crew, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert, had to shut down the command module and get into the LIM lunar module, which was actually not prepared for three men to live in. And this became their lifeboat, and the mission to the moon had to be aborted, and the crew had to return home. However, the command module had to be shut off. And now they were in complete darkness and freezing temperatures because all of the energy had to be rerouted to the limb to try and get them back to Earth. The crew waited in the cold and the darkness for the flight mission team in Houston to work out a flight plan that would get them safely back to Earth. People waited anxiously. Some thought this was going to be the worst disaster in NASA's history, even worse than the explosion that had taken place just prior with Apollo 12. But Gene Krantz, the director of flight operations, said he believed it was going to be their finest hour, and it was. Our champions, our USA astronauts, returned safe and sound despite the cold darkness of space. They returned to the warmth and the light of the earth where they could feel the sun. I think this is the perfect metaphor for us Christians living in the here and now. I say, Christians, we have a problem. Did you hear me? Christians, we have a problem. You see, darkness is doing its job really, really well in the world today. But are we, who are tasked with mirroring the light of Jesus doing our job as well as we should be? Matthew 5.14 reads in the Message Translation, Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as the city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open your house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you will prompt people to open up to God, this generous Father in heaven. You see, in today's text, Jesus is risking his life by confronting the Jewish religious leaders. He'd been teaching in the temple courts, and just prior to our scripture, he was faced with the issue of what to do with a woman caught in adultery. Most of us have heard that story somewhere in our studies. The religious leaders were trying to trap him into breaking the Jewish law, which stated that a woman caught in adultery was to be stoned. You see, if Jesus said stoner to keep the law, he would be contradicting the teachings that he had been sharing of God's love and grace and forgiveness. 
If he championed God's love and grace and forgiveness, he would be uh, breaking the law. He would be a lawbreaker, a heretic. But you see, Jesus did neither. He squatted down and he wrote in the sand. Now, nobody knows what he wrote. I wish I did. But we don't, so I can't tell you what he wrote. But what I do know is he stood up and said, let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. The religious leaders were caught in their own trap because the law said that no one is without sin. So you see, Jesus found a third way. He didn't fight and he didn't flee, he just outsmarted them. They sort of scurried away waiting for another time to trap and charge Jesus with blasphemy and we know he did. <clears throat> but that's not where I'm going. It was at this point that Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. How is he risking his life? Those are just words. Glad you asked me. He risked his life because his use of the word I am. He was using the same words spoken by God to Moses when he identified himself, when Moses said, who do I say is sending me? And God says, tell them I am. He is using those very same words. I am who I am. I am the light of the world is rooted in Jesus' relationship with his father. John Piper states, Jesus speaks from God and for God and as God. Apart from Jesus, we live in darkness. Jesus becomes light and with him, we become light. Meg Booker wrote, Jesus consistently focused on linking himself to the Father. The Greek word for light in this verse is phos, defined as light, anything emitting light, light, brightness. God profoundly states, I am, light is a part of who he is, subtle but powerful. God is light and light is essential for life. Jesus was and is our supreme champion. Our human USA champions, the Apollo astronauts, were headed for the moon. By the way, here's a little moon fact for you if you didn't know it. The moon does not produce any light. Did you know that? The moon has no light. It can only be seen as a result of the sun's light reflecting off of it. Do you not love that? It can only be seen as a result of the sun's light reflecting off of it. And you and I can only be seen as light if we are seen with the sun's light reflecting off of us. I'm telling you, in the Gospel of John, light is closely linked with distinguishing between what is true and what is false, between what is reality and what is illusion. As the light of the world, Jesus becomes the one and only source of illumination of spiritual reality. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Believe in him and we see all as it is, as it really is. Refuse to believe in him and we are left with only human standards. But our creator God has the last word, and I've read the end of the book. How many times have we heard Pastor Bob say that? And while I do not know what the immediate future holds, this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, I do know who holds the future, and God wins. I know this. This brings me back to the statement I made earlier about darkness doing its job so very well. Just look around you. Listen to the news. Read the newspapers. Talk to your neighbors, your family, your friends. It is so very easy to become disheartened and fearful today, isn't it? It really is. 
but I'm going to let you in on a secret. One of my very favorite uh, Christian writers is Julian of Norwich. Julian uh, was not really a nun, but she was a very religious prophetess who actually lived in a mud hut next to a uh, monastery. And she had many, many revelations that have been recorded that were from God. And her words in one of those revelations are what I hang on to, as well as my promises from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, are these words. God said to Julian, all shall be well, and all shall be well. And all manner of things will be well. She shared a joyful optimism that can help us to see, to stay in alignment with, and celebrate with God who is doing things in this world and his kingdom which is moving forward even in less than ideal circumstances. We believers can see all the collateral goods. You see, the Apollo 13 astronauts they didn't, it wasn't an easy journey back. They didn't know how to get them back. And because they were in the limb and not the command module, it was very hard for them to find direction. They couldn't, they couldn't stay on course aligned so that they would line up correctly. If they didn't line up correctly, they would hit the atmosphere and burn up. If they didn't line up correctly, they wouldn't land in a place where they could be picked up. They had to line up correctly. And so all of the people down in Houston Mission were working hard to find a flight path that would work for them. And they finally discovered that if they could find one fixed point, that they could line up the ship with one burst, which wouldn't use up too much of their energy that they needed. And they finally realized that they could use something in the heaven, and they found the earth. Brothers and sisters, we need something to line up with. We need a fixed point to line up with. And the fixed point we need to line up with to get ourselves safely home to the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. Until that day of God's kingdom coming, we who call ourselves Christians are commissioned to be light bearers. We are to be as bold and brave as our USA champions like the Apollo 13 astronauts. Our young disciples have just wound up a week of vacation Bible school learning all about stellar stuff. That's so important. But mostly, they learned how to be champion light bearers. I'm challenging myself and all of you out there who are listening through streaming, those of you who are here listening in the pews, I am challenging you all within the range of my voice to follow their lead and so embrace Jesus Christ that we outshine the darkness around us, that we do a better job than darkness is doing. So let us join hands with our youngest disciples and be champion light bearers for our Lord Jesus who lives and dwells in us in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit blaze in us so brightly that in the war against darkness we are champions. And may God make it so.